Welcome to this new episode of Your Next Trade called Today T-Bills Love. So we are in episode 22 and we'll be starting today with one of the nice chart that was um, brought by Tracy Holloway from, um, from Bloomberg on Twitter this week, uh, which is interesting, which tells you about um, the SPX, which is for the S&P earnings yield, which is was standing at 5.27% versus the six months T-bill in the US at 5.12%. So in other words, if you have been investing in equities because this was the what we call the TINA, this, that was the only alternative uh, to invest in the market. Now with bonds, with the yields going much higher, uh, there is more there is more than than equities, and there is more than one alternative. Uh, so, and I read something that was funny as well, which was uh, normally uh, we used to call the sell in May and go away. And I think that was from Goldman Sachs. Goldman Sachs was saying uh, T-bill and chill. Uh, so in other words, there is more uh, than equities now. And uh, we could see at something that we raised at the start of January for 2023, uh, some investors flying uh, the equity exposure. Why? Because the yields from uh, from bonds, uh, we, here we are talking the six months, but the, this is the same for the 12 months, everything that is short dated uh, is yielding almost 5% in the US. So uh, that is something that we discussed heavily over the last couple of weeks uh, on Discord through the community where many of the users have been trying to find out how to invest either through ETF or uh, buying T-bills. So even yesterday, we made some uh, calculations on how to calculate the, the yields on T-bills. So really, uh, that is something e e very important looking at the different performance across asset classes and how the different assets uh, could be yielding in the future. And if you have a lot of exposure into stocks, now there is more uh, alternative with uh, the, uh, the, the, the yields uh, that have been on the way up. So what about the week year-to-date asset performances? Uh, we had a nice bounce on equities and now the S&P 500 is up 5% um, uh, with the, the NASDAQ up uh, 12% roughly. Let me just draw here. Um, what is interesting is the euro stocks. Uh, Europe has been very strong and that has been the, the outperformer. Uh, to me, that has been a bit of a struggle. As I've been saying before, I was uh, short uh, the S&P through uh, a, uh, uh, sorry, a put spread. So I closed that position on Thursday, uh, mostly based on one of my uh, people on the community would put the position and uh, is pretty good at, at finding some good levels. So I closed that position. I'm still short Europe and a bit painful, not uh, that much, but um, really uh, Europe feels like this is the, the safe haven, uh, that industrials are doing better, luxury is doing better, uh, and that is uh, making the Euro stocks 50, the stock 600 uh, very strong. But overall, as we can see as well, is, is US, uh, we get double digit for the NASDAQ, almost double digit for the Russell. I strongly advise you to be looking at the odd performance of the small caps. So uh, small caps have been heavily uh, outperforming uh, the big caps and um, so look at the stocks um, uh, sorry the the s and p uh, small caps versus the s and p uh, big caps um year to date asset performances for the f x for the u s dollar so u s dollar roughly uh, flat on the year, you can see that many people on Twitter have been telling you that uh, they were um, uh, uh, forecasting um, a reversal. Uh, don't get me wrong, between January and March, uh, the dollar went up 3% and is now is flat. So it's very easy to say, you know, the market is going to turn XYZ at a, uh, at a specific time. Uh, very often, uh, this is what you see on CNBC between the short term and the long term uh, saying, you know, it's going to go up, then it's going to go down. So that means if it goes up, you're going to be saying I was right. And if it goes down, you're going to say uh, I was right as well. But literally for FX, now we're back to square one after a three to four percent move from the dollar. Uh, Bitcoin, Ethereum um, up 35%, but big down for, for the week, as we're going to see later. Uh, commodities, trying of, um, um, for the gold and the WTI flat on the year. Uh, copper still on expectation that uh, uh, the Chinese economy will be uh, pretty strong. What about the week to date? So a risk on week, um, uh, which started actually um, on, on Thursday around five o'clock uh, UK time after the Bostick uh, from, from the Fed uh, started to see to say that um, 
the Fed could be a bit more uh, dovish than expected. We have to keep in mind that Bostic is a non-voter, uh, but no matter what, uh, the market lacked those comments. As you can see, a lot on, on Wisconsin for, for stocks. Uh, dollar flat to uh, to small down on the week, 1%, um, 1065 for versus the, the euro. Uh, Bitcoin, Ethereum down on the week. Uh, so this is the second one effect of the uh, the collapse or the ongoing collapse of SI, which is uh, Silvergate, which is mostly um, if you've been having exposure uh, to crypto world and you've been looking for uh, having some kind of a prime broker, it was one of the very few players. So uh, many people have been caught in into SI. And what has been interesting is uh, the day after the results overnight, uh, I mean, overnight when it was uh, trading in, in, um, in Asia, uh, we had the, the weakening of the, the crypto space. So people need uh, to exit some of their position and probably are uh, withdrawing some money from uh, Silvergate. So uh, what about WTI? WTI pretty strong, gold pretty strong, copper pretty strong. So what has been happening is China came with good numbers. Uh, last week I flagged that actually uh, CNY was pretty um, weak and that was something to be uh, to be monitoring. I was expecting uh, a more uh, a weakening of the US, uh, uh, sorry, of the Chinese economy and I was completely wrong. A very strong number from China. Uh, which uh, puts, you know, a lot of commodities on the way up. Uh, so that gives you on the year to date industries performance now, a uh, very similar picture as of last um, last week. Uh, I think more interestingly, looking at the week to date industry performance, looking at what has been underperforming. So the banks underperforming on the other end of the spectrum, we have a lot of um, uh, industrial cyclical doing very well, which tells you that uh, at least this week uh, we priced a stronger economy, U.S. economy, than a week ago. Um, the ISM manufacturing and services were okay, and as well as I said, China was pretty pretty strong. So uh, a lot of hopes that the uh, that the cycle, the economic cycle, will be stronger than we expected uh, a month ago. Interestingly, uh, the long-term yields, the TLT, uh, rebounded um, uh, from on, on Friday. So again, a lot of um, of people telling you this was the trade, it was easy. Uh, what they forgot to mention that uh, we bounced by 2%, but before that, uh, we came down a lot. So uh, be very careful about what people are telling, telling on social media. What about the year to debt sector performance? Um, so the, the losers, uh, the defensive, healthcare, utilities, consumer staples, we have been in a risk on. Uh, mode since the start of the year with telco, consumer discretionary, IT, industrial even. But more interestingly, for the week to debt sector performances, as we can see, materials, industrials, um, really the, the restart of the economy, not the restart, but a stronger economy uh, than it was a week ago. So again, uh, I was pretty wrong last week, and, and I think it's important to say when you're right and when you're wrong. I know that on, on, on social media, only people are, are, are right, but uh, clearly China has been uh, stronger. So that gives you um, uh, hope of, of Q1 being um, pretty strong. Um, there is um, a lot of liquidity going into the system, but that tells you as well about something that inflation is going to be strong, that despite what the central bankers have been saying, both in Europe and in the US, that they try to limit access to liquidity and the economy is not that hot. Hot, sorry. Um, actually, they'll be facing something like a hot uh, potato. So um, something that we'll have to check. What are the rates telling us for the US 10 years at 396% as of yesterday, uh, with a small change from the week to date, but again, a bit of misleading um, picture because we we went 15 beeps down uh, between Thursday and, and Friday. So we went up to 4.10% here and we came down. As we can see for the yield curve, the 10 versus the 2, uh, we are minus 90. So 
the short part of the curve, the two years, the, the six months, the, the nine months, the 12 months, everything has been in terms of yield going up aggressively on the expectations that the Fed uh, will be uh, doing more. Uh, so if we compare year, week on week between the 24th and, and as of yesterday, um, the picture is more or less the same. If we compare the red to the blue, it's it's very similar picture. But we can argue, we can say that, you know, the the terminal rate is going to be around 5.5 to 5.7 percent. Uh, this is the the pricing these days um, that could be changing. Uh, as we're going to see later, there is some catalyst now uh, with the uh, especially on on Tuesday and Wednesday uh, with Powell going into uh, uh, talking uh, into the Senate. What about the VIX? So VIX very very interesting. 18.5 uh, percent. Um, as of yesterday, we were a couple of sessions ago around 21-22%. And again, uh, you will see on social media uh, people, you know, clapping their hands and saying, you know, I've been short uh, volatility. So if you've been looking at, um, if you've been short volatility, both on a daily uh, shorting the straddle, meaning you've been uh, um, betting that the move on the S&P will be less than the moves based, based by the straddle. So you'll be short the straddle or you'll be just smart smashing the VIX future or smashing the volatility that has been working very, very well. The downside with, with those strategies, it works, it works, it works until it doesn't. And you don't want to be the retail guy that's going into short the futures and when the futures go uh, against you big time. That happened in 2017 when one of the ETFs on Credit Suisse completely blew up. So. Uh, we had some 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 factors before with many uh, Asian funds and ma Asian retail that were uh, selling volatility. I think now what is happening is many uh, retail traders and and um, and even some funds, you know, have been selling volatility. It has been working, um, and that gives you the 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 price action that we had yesterday uh, on, on the the S and P, as we're going to be uh, discussing later. So, let, let, let's jump now into the um, the technical analysis, uh, looking as always starting with the S and P. So, the S and P here, I'm putting the, the weekly chart, uh, looking through the S and P futures. So you can go on trading view and putting E S one. So we have been. Uh, uh, going uh, testing the support uh, now because the, the this downtrend is no support. If you go back into into a daily, what has been interesting? If you put this chart this way, you're going to see that we have been testing the 200 moving average. Um, why is it important? Because many of the winners of, of 2022, which have been the, the the trend followers, the CTAs of this world, um, are, are looking at the different moving averages, the 50 days, the 20 days, the 200 days, to put some exposure. We discussed last week that uh, 4,000 was kind of important level for uh, the CTAs. Um, so they started to be short, then they get caught and have to, to, uh, to cut position. So if you look at many of those trend followers that are the a fantastic year in 2022, up 15, 20, 30 percent. They have been struggling year to date, uh, especially trading S&P, trading Nasdaq. On the bonds, on the short term bonds, the, the trend has been pretty clear. Uh, that's, this is the same with Europe. They have been pretty long Europe. So some positions have been working, but overall there is no, not much of a trend. So struggling and that gives you a bit of a shock that is ongoing with stocks. So if you look now at the Nasdaq, if you look at the candle and we go into a weekly, that is that is a good candle, uh, but still we are uh, we might and we will I think test test the support. So this is only one week. Uh, again, um, when we were five five percent above, everyone was saying we're gonna go into the 4600 for the S and P. If you look at the Russell. We uh, uh, we didn't test uh, uh, last week low, so no new lows, no new highs. So it's a bit of a consolidation. Emerging market through the EM, so China, good numbers that helped. If you look now at the stocks uh, uh, 600, which is for Europe, uh, not new highs, but actually the stocks 50, which is more driven into into banks, um, has been very very strong. So Europe really. Uh, the outperformer, uh, and that goes with the DAX, but again, not new highs. What about CL1? 
Similar picture, um, like we had for the last six to 10 weeks, we have been consolidating between 72 and 83. Um, a bit of noise, uh, the move is going to be quite something. Copper testing the support, which is at 395 euro dollar here. Uh, so, a different picture between the start of the week and the end of the week, but um, not much of a change so far. So, market is, is waiting for a new catalyst. I think the one that I've been uh, monitoring and I've been clear on, 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 on uh, underlying this one, which is looking at what we call the generals of this market, the, those big companies, those Meta, Amazon, Apple, uh, the ones that have been outperforming the market before uh, until, you know, October, November uh, 2021. And since then, I've been struggling. Now we have been, we had this bounce, now we are consolidating. And I think in terms of what is what are the next drivers, what are the next outperformers, this is really a space to be looking at. Okay, so this is this is it for technical analysis. So we had the bounce five, so we, we bounced two to three percent uh, from the lows of Thursday. Uh, but we are still four to five percent from from the from the recent high. So the bit of of pain uh, for both the long and the short. Uh, so looking at what has been interesting for this week, and we flagged uh, uh, last week, and so we were looking into the Chinese numbers. So the Chinese numbers are actually the restart of the Chinese economy is much much stronger than than what I thought, and what the consensus was, both on the services and the manufacturing. So that tells you that uh, the economy is uh, in um, based on on, on the, this power of the strength coming from from china are going to be stronger in q1 and q2 but that gives you as well another but overall picture which is uh, inflation is going to be stronger and it's going to be more sticky than than what we thought even three months ago so we're going to have better growth uh, so I think one of the very important chart here, this is the S&P 500 versus the UST node. So uh, in blue, you get the um, you get the S&P 500 futures, the ES versus the the US uh, 10 years, and and you see the correlation that we had over the last 10 sessions and the decorrelation um, that uh, started when Bostic started to talk. Uh, on uh, Thursday around 5, 6 p.m. UK time, and then we had the ramp in the uh, stock market. Uh, so a bit of decorrelation. Um, what has been very true in 2022, there has been a strong correlation between um, uh, T-bonds, uh, sorry, T-notes, and, and, the, and the equity market uh, that will probably going to stay the same. So that's really something that will be, I keep, on, uh, I keep on monitoring. What is very, very true is if you look at the S&P here, Thursday on Friday, so we had Bostic that starts to, to talk, then the zero date to expiry starts to kick in. Okay, so this is the options here. Then we got more options coming. And if you have been an active trader and if you are familiar with VWAP, it feels very much like, you know, people put an order in VWAP for the next 24 hours. And if you'll be looking, actually, I should have been putting the, the, the VIX chart, the VIX will have been uh, going uh, the other way around. So something that we, we talked over and over, which is smashing the, the volatility. Volatility means people are buying uh, equities, more and more equities, you get the uh, options, the shorter term options through the calls that I've been buying and the market goes up and up and up and up, not necessarily in big volume, but uh, that gives, that tells you the, the uh, what has been happening, the, the short squeeze. So lucky here, as I said, I close uh, the, the put spread, I should have been closing as well uh, my uh, uh, Europe short. What about Tesla? Something that I mentioned, you know, um, market is, is, is still uh, struggling to find uh, new leaders. Uh, so there's a lot of talks about artificial intelligence, uh, stock like AI, on, on Friday was very, very strong, up 30% after some comment from Broadcom. If you look at Tesla, which was before a leader, so they had their uh, companies meeting, investor presentation on uh, Thursday, on, on Wednesday, sorry, and after the close, um, then on Thursday, we get we get the, the price action. Um, feels a bit like maybe the, the Musk Tesla magic way of doing marketing is a bit uh, weakening. Having said that, uh, there are charts that are circulating on Twitter where you're going to see that the daily uh, uh, 
purchasing power of retail into um, into Tesla is still very very strong. So there's still a lot of appetite for uh, retail traders, uh, zero day to expiry uh, uh, options trader, retail traders to be very active in Tesla. So that has been for the week. Again, the week until Thursday. Uh, market was coming down every single day in a very quiet, uh, like organized way. No sell off, but just going down 50 bips, 1% every single day. Then we had the turn on Thursday, a bit on Bostick, which is a non voter uh, for the um, for the FOMC. So he can say whatever he wants. So it feels very much like when the market is is going a bit down too much that by magic you will have a non-voter coming and saying look guys maybe the fed is not going to be as okay as what you thought um if we so that has been the bounce ism manufacturing is the same picture in the us very much you know around 47 percent so still into contraction services is kind of okish uh, but you know um both the uh, for both the um, the prices have been have been way too high. So uh, very similar picture uh, macro wise, except China, uh, which is better. So what about the catalyst? Uh, so a bit a, a bit short in terms of catalyst, um, less catalyst as before. First thing first is we get less earnings. Okay, so we only get. Uh, three big companies, Oracle, Alta, and CPB. Um, so that is for the week. In terms of big catalysts, we get uh, Powell on Tuesday and on Wednesday uh, on the, for the Senate, in front of the Senate and the House of Representatives. Uh, so he's going to be, as, all, as always, making his speech, then he's going to be grilled by uh, senators. And obviously those senators will be asking, oh, what are you doing with uh, with inflation. So uh, you can make sure that there's going to be a lot of questions about inflation. It will have to be, uh, it will have to look tough on inflation um, because, you know, this is very important uh, with elections coming, uh, coming next year. So Tuesday, Wednesday, we got Fed Powell. Um, Bank of Canada on Wednesday, red decision. This is important. Why? Because, you know, if you remember, um, that was a couple of months ago when they went from a very hawkish to a more dovish. The market lo loved it. And that was the start of the talks that uh, all central bankers will be uh, pivoting soon. And what has been very clear over the last uh, months or so is they are not going to be pivoting uh, soon. What about Friday? Friday we got NFP, so which is the job unemployment in the US. Um, that is obviously one of the big mandates of the of the of the Fed. Uh, unemployment is at all time low, around 3.5 percent in the US. So far, if you look at the S and P 500 performance versus the NFP. Um, on the day of the NFP, there is not much of a, of a trend. If you're looking for a trend, we have been down man, minus 1% in Feb, plus 2% in, in, in Jan. Um, but what has been interesting in, in, in Feb, uh, the number um, was very, very strong. So the numbers from January, I think there was a lot of seasonality. Numbers were up 500,000 people, uh, which was way, way too much. So the seasonality still expect probably a number that could be uh, quite crazy and uh, way uh, different from um, the consensus. Looking at what is the uh, uh, the the, uh, the options uh, pricing, looking at the straddle uh, for the S and P, one point nine percent versus one point nine percent as of last week. Um, we mentioned the seasonality, which is positive going forward for the next three months for the S and P, um, and very often that start actually um, early early March. So in terms of timing, we we pretty pretty good on on following the the usual path. What I'll be mostly following, um, I'm, I'm lacking a bit of catalysts uh, in this market, is the US 10 years and how the US 10 years will be, will be doing. Uh, market is very much driven by those uh, short term options. So uh, we have been trading in, in this range of 300 points on the S&P with, with actually uh, driven by the gamma. Now we are gamma positive. Um, not that far from the CTA levels, which, as we said before, around 4,000. Uh, so we kind of, you know, you're trading with an options very close to, to the strike. 
and and feel like it's close to the strike and with the maturity being very close so uh, that gives you a bit of of of, of changes a bit of, of volatility should i say better um and and market hard hard to uh, to read economy is better but inflation is way too strong and the earning season that is now over was not that good in the us uh, better in europe so this is it for me today if you have some questions, uh, you should be joining the trading community uh, through Discord. So we get two or three channels that are free for everyone. Uh, if you want to do the four by four and and learn even more doing the mentoring, you will have you will have access to more channels. Uh, but um, that is something that we like doing. I hope it helps through those videos. If you get some comments, if you like what you're seeing, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel uh, because uh, that helps. Uh, for me to do uh, what I like be doing. Thank you very much. See you next week and uh, have a good week of trading. Bye-bye.